Lately it's looking like everything perfect Out the mud with it, I put the work in You can find me where the turf is Pin precision like a surgeon Bad ones used to curve me Showing up to the show when the curse split She know that I'm worth it, I'm finna go up, I'm aerial I got the hit stash, got a bracelet for impact Real tricky, quick to flip a pretty penny to a thick stack Quick stack, think fast and I talk real I give a fuck about how they feel Me and Zay just dropped the propane And it sounded like massive pill For my dog, I'ma ride till the wheels kill Got his hand on the hammer, so keep it legit I been the man with the blueprint I won't stop till I own every brick I used to lay out in the lawn just to feel the world spin on its axis Now I got the access and the last laugh got it off of the passion This video is sponsored by Altium More on them later This e-scooter project can project a rainbow anywhere you drive And it has a cool Android app that works as a dashboard and settings menu for the scooter This is a project I've been working on for almost the last year of college and it has been what I would call a true triathlon of engineering. This project requires a bit of mechanical, electrical and software engineering and taught me a ton of new skills that I always wanted to learn. This is a very special e-scooter that an old colleague gave me. We both worked at the startup together. He always wanted to make the scooter fast with me. But we never found the time when we worked together. Well, a year later or so, he contacted me and asked me if I want to have the scooter. To which I said, sure. But this e-scooter was super slow. The control on it was really weird and it had a range of around 5 kilometers, so it was basically unusable. In the first video part of this e-scooter, I reported on the current state of the scooter. The good thing about it was that it was foldable and it was pretty light and had a really sturdy frame. And overall the build quality seemed pretty good. But if you know me and what I do, you also know that I don't just build another electric vehicle to drive around. I already have a few electric vehicles I can drive. What really interests me is developing something new. You know, offering some progress to the DIY electric vehicle community. That's why I always try to open source new projects. That's why I tried here. I tried to combine some ideas I had in my head with the ideas some of my old colleagues had. A while back, when I wanted to add LEDs to the underside of my electric skateboard, a colleague mentioned that individually addressable RGB LEDs that are synced to the wheel speed would probably look really awesome. Meaning, when you drive forward, a rainbow or basically any kind of pattern you want could be projected onto the road, so that it basically looks static to the road. I thought that would be a really awesome idea and I wanted to implement that and see how it looks. And then I want to implement another idea. I always wanted to build an app. And in this case, an app that you open that automatically connects your e-scooter without the press of any buttons and displays important data, maybe in a cool way while you drive and allows you to be able to control things like the LEDs and maybe later on front lights and things like that. Or maybe act like a smart key so the scooter only starts when it detects your smartphone nearby. So when I start a project like this, first I write down all the things I need to check that I don't know yet. That usually involves a ton of googling to find the components that I need and which components allow the functionality that I want. Often I also take apart the things I already have, in the case this e-scooter, to figure out how they work and how they are compatible with the components I want to use. So let's make an example. I wanted to use this VASC motor controller, but I didn't know if there would be any issues when connecting it to my motor of this e-scooter. So what I know is the VASC motor controller can handle basically any motor you throw at it. But when taking this motor apart, I saw that the temperature sensor was connected the wrong way. But it had all the hall sensors required. So I rewired the temperature sensor and everything was working. Hall effect sensors and the temperature sensor. Awesome! The next step was to figure out how to communicate from a smartphone to the VASC motor controller. Well, directly is not really possible. My VASC doesn't have Bluetooth or anything like that. But a great way to pull data from the VASC is by using an Arduino. They are super easy to program and really fun. One Arduino that is supported by the Arduino library and has Bluetooth at the same time and is plenty fast to calculate all the data and control the LEDs is the ESP32. It's super fast and has all the features I need. I used a development board for the ESP32 and connected the UART2 port to a VASC. Communication worked great right away with the help of a library written by SolidGeek. 
I soon realized that the ESP32 development board has an annoying issue where you always have to press the enable and boot pin every time you want to flash it, which happens a lot when you try to debug something. But there's a workaround. A 10 microfarad capacitor between the enable and ground pin allows you to flash it without any weird issues, just by pressing the flash button on the computer. Now a quick interruption from my sponsor. When I started my journey in electrical engineering, I quickly needed to learn how to design PCBs. I always wanted to find a good PCB design software that is not only easy to use right now, but also has the depth to be used professionally. After some searching around and already working at a startup, I soon realized that most tech companies out there use Altium Designer. And for a good reason. Altium offers a great and easy user interface. It has good tutorials and support for learning and it has insane depth to it. So I barely scratch the surface of the software's capability when I use it for my PCB designs. Alstium is tightly integrated with mechanical CAD software like SOLIDWORKS or Inventor. There is nothing like that out there. I think it's really the best electrical design software. But don't be fooled and think it's just software for professionals. They offer a free student version that I actually used even way before Altium ever contacted me about a sponsorship. And even if you are not a student, I would highly recommend you click the link below this video and try out their free trial. Test it out. No matter if you are a beginner or already an expert at maybe using another software. So below I linked the free trial and also a tutorial to get you started. So big thanks to Altium and let's keep this video going. Next up, I rebuilt the old brake with a new analog Hall effect sensor so that I can use the rear wheel not only for acceleration but also deceleration, aka braking. Because my cables on the ESP32 from the throttle and the brake were so long on this vehicle, I also needed to use a little capacitor on the analog pins of the ESP32 for stabilizing the input a little bit. For powering on the whole vehicle and powering on the VASC without destroying anything, I developed a anti-spark circuit and made a PCB for that. If you want to check it out, I made a video about that right here. For powering the LEDs and the lights and the phone charging capability, I decided I want to use a 5V and a 12V DC-DC buck converter. To fit all these components into a small space that the previous controller left me, I grinded away a bunch of plastic and got to work in CAD. I designed a TPU rubber case for all the components. I made individual PLA hard plastic cases for each individual component to slot into the bigger rubber casing that holds everything into place. Then I added a big green switch that lights up nicely from the 12 volt power lines. I had to modify the plastic a little bit for that. This big switch turns the whole scooter on. I modified the whole e-scooter frame quite a bit especially for my swappable batteries that I also designed and cut, welded them together with my spot welder and then wired everything up. That was a ton of work. Since there are so many components tightly packed into a small space, a lot of planning had to go into how to assemble the whole unit, since it's only really possible to assemble it in one specific order. Assembly of the whole e-scooter was actually a quite simple part of this project. What was quite hard was figuring out the code not only for the hardware on the ESP32, but also the Android app I programmed in Android Studio. How do you even send float variables over Bluetooth as bytes so that they're not causing any unnecessary traffic? Or how do you control 74 LEDs so fast and accurately that they match exactly the wheel speed? On the smartphone side, I had to figure out how to multi-thread tasks so that the UI runs fluid all the time and so that I can draw a graph and also, you know, receive Bluetooth data while also reacting to user input touches. I spent quite a few nights working on the software and I was really glad that I had friends that work in computer science fields that could help me with some of the issues in the beginning. Towards the end of the project I actually got the hang of most things and implementing new features got really easy. So let me show you what the app can do. When you open it up for the first time, you are greeted with a list of all Bluetooth devices you ever connected to. You can choose any Bluetooth device in there. And the app saves it for the next time you start up, so it automatically tries to connect in the future. On the dashboard right here, you can see your speed, the power you are using and the battery voltage as a number but also as this bar. 
the bar is really useful since you can tell roughly how much percent you got left. Currently, there is no coulomb counter implemented, so there is no real percentage rating. But that would be a great feature to implement in the future maybe. Here you can basically see the energy coming out or going into the battery. The bigger the gray area between the graph and the zero line, the more energy just got moved. So basically when you accelerate, you can see a huge spike in energy usage. Or when you region brake, where basically the motor gets used as a generator to pump your kinetic energy back into the battery, you can see how much energy just went back into the battery. It's really useful to estimate how much power and how much energy you're using. What's also really useful are the stats down here. There are things like for example distance ridden or the energy you've used. But what I always like to keep an eye on is the motor temperature. Because especially on hills you will be able to run the motor super hot so that the VESC motor controller has to thermal throttle where it basically decreases the current when the motor gets too hot. Here you can see the temperature in real time, really useful. When you open up the settings menu, you can select any lighting effect you want or even turn the lighting off. And as soon as you hit save, it sends a command to the e-scooter and applies your settings. Here's how I realized the moving LED effect. Basically, the VESC motor controller already reports a very accurate current position of the motor. With the knowledge of how far apart each LED is from the next one and how big the wheel circumference is, you can very accurately tell which LEDs should display what. And I programmed a few different modes for that. One mode for example shows a static rainbow, where the length of the rainbow is roughly 2 meters. So every 2 meters the rainbow repeats itself. I also made another mode where I shrunk the rainbow down a bit, so it's only like a meter or so. I soon realized that at fast speeds this looks really irritating. That's why I developed another mode, where as soon as you drive faster, the rainbow gets longer. This is by far my favorite mode, because it looks really good at any speed basically. Another one I added was a mode where it displays green lights that are roughly 25 centimeters long and repeat themselves every 50 centimeters. So it's basically just green and black stripes that repeat all the time. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot about the insane power this thing is capable of putting out. The cells I used are the Samsung 35E 18650 type cells, which are capable of each putting out around 13 amps, which leads to around 1.7 kilowatts of peak electrical power. I raced it against some of the electric skateboards you can buy out there and except maybe against my own DIY electric skateboard, this e-scooter basically destroyed any electric skateboard in terms of acceleration. But why is it so fast? Mainly because of how the motor is wound. The motor has a really low kV constant. What is a kV constant? It's basically how fast the motor will turn at any given voltage. So kV times the voltage you're applying that's how much RPM this motor is going to have when running without any load. And this e-scooter tops out at around 32 kilometers an hour. Which you might think is not that fast, but I already find really sketchy on a small scooter like this and it kind of feels unstable honestly. But everything you're basically missing out on top speed, you instead have in terms of acceleration. So this thing is for sure a fun vehicle. and. Honestly, it was such a great learning experience. The swappable batteries, the smartphone app and the fun lighting really make this thing so great. I love it. I have so many cool ideas for it in the future like maybe turning on animation like automatic smartphone detection for unlocking, a pairing animation when connected to the phone or things like that. But I also have to say that my next semester at university is going to be a practical semester in a different city. So I probably won't have time for that. But that doesn't mean there won't be any videos, just not regularly. But it's not like I ever uploaded regularly here before. But I would still really appreciate if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. And also while you're at it, maybe like the video, I would really appreciate it. I can't appreciate enough everybody who followed me throughout these last few years. It's been such a fun journey and I really love this stuff and I want to develop so much awesome technology in the future. So thank you so much for supporting me. As always, I hope you learned something. 
This project will be on GitHub as soon as possible, so some of you can tinker around with it if you want. Anyway, that's been it. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Ciao.